I'm just picky. That is my problem, and that is my fault. I'm a very picky individual, and it robs me of sleep, and it robs me of joy. It robs me of the joy of things other people enjoy. I'm too busy picking holes in them. Like one film we all loved as kids was Back to the Future. Didn't we? Wasn't that a great film? No, it's shit. Let me tell you why. Back to the Future. Okay, Marty McFly goes back in time. I don't have a problem with that. It's science fiction. Fine, let's have a bit, right? Goes back in time, meets his parents. But because of the way he meets his parents, he causes them not to meet each other. And this threatens his existence, because now he won't get bored. So he spends the rest of the film, in between trying to rebuild the time machine, he tries to get his parents to get together. Now he gets to know his mother first, who fancies him. I think part of my misgivings with this film is the fact that I watched it in the company of my mother. And it was just <laughs> awkward. But eventually he becomes friends with his mother. He becomes best mates with his dad, right? Becomes like his mentor, teaching him how to pull his own ma. It's all a bit fucked up, really, when you think about it. <laughs> But eventually, having spent a week with the two of them, he gains their trust, he gets them together, they're gonna get married, everything is well, he gets the time machine working again, heads back to the 80s, fair enough, Marty, wherever you wanna go, we've got mobile phones up here, but grand. <laughs> and everything's fine. Here's my problem. Surely there's gonna be a point, after the parents get together, they get married, they have a kid, the kid's gonna reach the age of maybe 14, 15, and the parents are gonna fucking Recognize him. <laughs> it's been a week with the bastard. It caused them to fall in love and get married. You don't just forget somebody like that. There's going to be a point where he's going to come down for breakfast one morning and the man's going to go, Hang on. <laughs> You're that bloke. <laughs> At the very least, you think the dad would get a bit suspicious. Are you sure you didn't fuck that fellow when you were in high school? Because our son looks awfully like it. It's quite uncanny. I do, I just get annoyed. Like, I got really annoyed last year when Michael Jackson re released Thriller. Are you aware of this? Yes, a few of you. Aware that Michael Jackson re released Thriller. Not aware that I was annoyed by it. That would be weird. <laughs> See Michael Jackson's re released Thriller? That's going to piss Ed Byrne off now, Ed. <laughs> I can't imagine why, but I'm sure the picky prick will have a problem with it. <laughs> Michael Jackson re-released Thriller. Well, Michael Jackson didn't. His record company re-released Thriller last year. He was a bit busy being mental. <laughs> but, <laughs> takes a lot of time out of your day. But they re-released it. Those of you who know he re-released it, do you, you know why? you know the reason for it? He was skinned. <laughs> Partly. But the reason they gave, it was, no, here's the thing. It was because it was the 25th anniversary of the initial release of Thriller, so they released it again. Which to me doesn't seem a good enough reason to release an album that was already freely available. It's not like it's been hard to come by in the last 25 years. Like, oh, one would have to go to a specialist shop such as HMV <laughs> in order to source such a curio. <laughs> but they re-released it, and, and, and the, you know, the ad for it that four of you saw <laughs> It said, Thriller's back, and it's better than ever. And I remember thinking, yeah, because nothing improves with age like 80s pop music. <laughs> How is it better than ever? It's not a single malt scotch. You know? Thriller's not been mellowing in an oak cask for the last 25 years. <laughs> Too many people sniggering at that, considering there are no middle-class people in tonight, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> a single malt scotch joke. <laughs> Ooh, I've given myself away. <laughs> But they made it better, apparently. Well, they remastered it, which means they've turned it up. <laughs> God, isn't it? They turned it up, and they put in a DVD with the videos. But they haven't fixed it. I remember when Thriller came out. I was 11 years old when I first saw the, the video for Thriller, and I remember being quite scared. You know, there was loads of zombies in it, and there was a werewolf, and all that kind of carry on. And I remember Vincent Price's haunting monologue about creatures crawl in search of blood to terrorize your neighborhood. But, but how come when John Landis was directing the video, or, or when Quincy Jones was producing the album, clever men, top of their field, how come nobody had the balls to go, Michael, don't mean to step on your creative vision here or anything, but you don't think what you're going for here is really more of a horror than a thriller. <laughs> Fairly basic movie genre distinction, no? 
I mean, I've seen Dawn of the Dead. It's a hoot. It's hardly a fucking hoot on it, is it? <laughs> Columbo doesn't come in at the end and go, it was the zombies. <laughs> Thanks for your help. <laughs> I know this because I watch a lot of horror movies. I probably watch more than is good for me. Um, I watched a horror film the other day on DVD. I say the other day. I say the other day quite a lot, ladies and gentlemen. It makes me sound like I've had a very busy week. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. The other day can mean anything up to ever. <laughs> but go with it. The other day, no, I watched a, a, a horror movie on DVD, uh, Hostel Part 2. Anyone seen it? Yeah. What did you think? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty poor. I like it. <laughs> what's, what's your name, sir? Craig. 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 I, I, I like it. Pretty poor. So I, I can't help thinking that film 2009 would be a much shorter, more succinct program if you were the host, Craig. I think it would be... <laughs> this week, Hustle Part 2. Pretty poor. <laughs> Next week, Curious Case of Benjamin Button. It's all right. Bit long. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty poor. I agree with you, sir. I agree with you, Craig. What did you think of Hostel Part 1? Shite. Right? Shite. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. <laughs> yeah, you didn't quite catch it. He didn't just say shite. He said, shite, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with you on that one, too. But here's the thing. How come we both watched Hostel Part 2? <laughs> Why? You know? I don't remember actively thinking whilst watching Hostel Part 1, this is shit, can't wait for the sequel. <laughs> yeah, we did! Do oh, you know what I'd like to see? A sort of warmed over retread of this bollocks. <laughs> Maybe with some television actors thrown in. That would be top notch. <laughs> for those of you not familiar with either film, first of all, well done. Second of all, <laughs> Hostel Part 1, ostensibly, is about young men being tortured to death by paying customers. Uh, in an underground bunker in Eastern Europe. Hostel Part 2, wait for it, is about young women being tortured to death by paying customers. Yeah, where do they get their ideas from? Hey, Greg, huh? Before I go to watch this piece of, um, you know, uh, gornography or uh, video nasty, depending on what era you're from, because it's funny how people from different eras will refer to things in movies in different ways. Like, I had a conversation with a friend of me, Dad, the other day. I say the other day, but. <laughs> This is how long ago it was. It was Master and Commander. That was the film we were talking about. And it's just great what terms people use, because whereas you or I might have said that film had amazing CGI, somebody maybe a little bit older might have said it had excellent special effects. But my dad may went, oh, no, I enjoyed that film. It had incredible uh, trick photography. <laughs> <laughs> to go, did you enjoy the trick photography? <laughs> but anyway, about to watch this... Uh, this uh, Gornography, video nasty, whatever. And what's, I've got to sit through, first of all, though, my own personal torture, which is the DVD piracy warning. <laughs> that I think we can all agree is beginning to get on our collective tits at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this music's so funky, it makes me want to obey the law. <laughs> Don't the Federation Against Copyright Theft just know how to talk to the kids? <laughs> What's up? You downloading a movie? That's whack! 